Hello friends, this is Durga again from IT University. I want to stop shop to learn all the technologies. At this time, we are uh, we are talking about setting up of Hive on um, our seven node cluster using AWS and Cloudera distribution. Um, and we have already configured HDFS, MapReduce, Yarn, Zookeeper, and also Hive. This video will cover the validation of Hive and also review of uh, several Hive components. So to get the details about hive in cloudera manager just click on hive and it will take you to this window uh, in the status page it will uh, give you the status of all the components that are installed as part of the hive service we have one hive meta store server one hive server two uh, and uh, hosts so hive meta store server is the one which will actually um, make sure uh, to uh, to interact with the Hive uh, uh, MySQL database which is created to store the Hive metadata. So what is that Hive metadata we will see in a moment but Hive meta store uh, is used to store the metadata of, uh, of the Hive tables uh, that are created on top of data on HDFS. And Hive server 2 uh, is a web server which will facilitate us to uh, to enable uh, which will facilitate us to connect to the Hive database using JDBC tools such as um, uh, uh, such as Hue etc. Okay, and uh, now you can actually click on instances to get the list of the servers which are running this uh, daemon process for Hive such as Hive Metastore Server and Hive Server 2, both are running on 2.44 and uh, gateways uh, are just uh, the client. So each of the uh, instance in Hive, uh, uh, each of the instance in our Hadoop cluster can actually submit Hive queries. We don't need to configure every uh, each one of them as uh, uh, gateways. Uh, it is enough to configure uh, one of them which is 2.42 as gateway. But uh, sometimes uh, when we run uh, workflows using Uzi, any of the node can submit the Hive query. In that case, uh, each of them have to be gateways. So uh, that's why it has enabled everything when we are trying to uh, set up the cluster as gateway. Uh, to manually submit Hive queries, it is enough to have gateway in our de designated gateway node which is 242 where we are only configuring it as gateway for each and every tool and then go to configuration you will get all, uh, all the configuration parameters and uh, um, uh, we have configured hive with zookeeper so that in future if we need high availability for hive server 2 we can do that and map reduce will be run using yarn uh, so as of now we don't have HBase and uh, uh, Spark so we, we have chosen none for these things. And so these are the uh, important parameters and if you want to get update uh, the uh, database you can click on Hive Metastore Server and, uh, and, some, uh, and there will be uh, pa parameters related to the database. I think it's not Hive Metastore Server. Go to Hive Service Wide, and then go to Hive Metastore Database. A yeah, scope should be Hive Service Wide, and Hive Metastore Database is the one which will actually, uh, uh, which will actually have the parameters related to database. So the database type is uh, MySQL. Uh, database name is Hive. Uh, Metastore Database is in host uh, IP 172.31.53.242 we are using MySQL so port number is 3306 if you want to change all this uh, any of these things you can do that um, by updating here and then save changes and, uh, and the database configurations for the Hive Meta Store uh, will be updated and then um, there is a Hive Server 2 web UI you can click on it because it is using private IP. We need to enable SSH tunneling. So I am opening another window here. And enabling SSH tunneling. Now we have to enable Foxy proxy. Once the Foxy proxy is enabled, now you can actually access Hive Server Web UI. So this is how. Uh, you can actually connect to Hive Server web interface 
so if it is not connecting through um, uh, through cloudera manager what you can do is uh, you can use the port number of the um, server on which hive server is running and then uh, sorry ip address of the host on which uh, uh, hive server is running and then port number 10002 will take you to the uh, web interface of hive and you have to enable ssh tunneling as we are using ec2 and uh, all these are configured using private ips and now you can actually see details about uh, hive server you can get the logs you can get uh, get the configuration even here in the form of xml file you can search for the mysql uh, let me mysql uh, and uh, mysql related details or anything which is uh, related to hive parameters you can get those things here so this is actually using incorrect uh, and this is actually reflecting incorrect configurations for some reason anyway you don't need to worry much about it okay but you can actually get the configuration here also and if you want to uh, review the parameter files from command line you have to log on to the host on which hive uh, is running which is 244 hive meta store and hive server are running you have to go there and then etc hive conf is the standard location but again this location does not reflect the runtime uh, parameters uh, uh, to get the runtime parameters you have to go to where run cloudera scm agent process ls hyphen ltr you can see multiple directories here in this case we are talking about hive and hive server 2 and hive meta store uh, latest directory is 367 and 368 so to get the hive meta store uh, configurations you go runtime configurations which are used for hive meta store you can go here and ls hyphen ltr you can see high side direct xml file here you can open this and uh, you can actually see the uh, connection url for uh, uh, meta store uh, the driver name the connection username connection password which is uh, uh, which is grayed out here um, etc so all the details you can see from here and hive is configured with uh, zookeeper so you can see the zookeeper related parameters also here okay so that is how you can actually get the details about the uh, hive uh, parameters and uh, hiveside.xml uh, is the para, um, is the file which have the parameters if you want to override uh, uh, parameters while running the queries you can create this dot hiveRC directory uh, sorry dot hiveRC file on the host on which you want to run the hive, uh, hive queries for example if i want to run hive queries from 242 and if i want to override parameters at runtime i can actually say I can actually open hive uh, dot hiveRC file and I can set the parameter here but the command to set the parameter is the set command and parameter name and value name so by using this notation I can override any parameter uh, at runtime while launching hive and running the queries if you want to override parameters for, uh, for that particular node you can use this dot hiveRC file and these are the important parameters uh, jdo option connection url and there are other jdo option parameters also which will actually control uh, all the jdo or jdbc settings to connect to the metastore database and then uh, in hdfs uh, a warehouse directory will be created with the name user high warehouse which i have reviewed as part of the previous video mapred.reduce.tasks uh, tasks will actually control the number of reducers um, uh, that should be used for a given high query by default it is minus one which means that it will actually uh, determine uh, a number of reducers at the runtime based on the size of the data and then zookeeper quorum uh, which are required uh, for you to write uh, jdbc programs etc 
you need to understand the these parameters called how do keep a quorum and how do keep a client port and uh, now we will actually look into the hive log files and uh, uh, on whatever host you run hive queries under tmp there will be a directory um, with the name hive okay as of now it is not created because we haven't launched the hive so now i am launching hive and also i will run the queries so hive command line is launched and uh, let me run show databases to see if there are any databases there is one database called show de uh, default and the default uh, so in hive databases are nothing but directories and you can run all the hdfs commands by using uh, uh, dfs so dfs is alias in hive for hadoop space fs whatever command you can run using hadoop space fs you can run with dfs and ls user hive warehouse so this is the hive warehouse directory and this directory actually represents the default database okay so if you create tables under default database and uh, a new directory will be created here if you create a database under the warehouse directory itself a new directory with extension .db will be created i will show that uh, later but this is how you can actually launch hive and uh, run queries such as show databases and show tables to list the databases and list the tables etc and now if you exit go to temp and run ls hyphen ltr you can see a directory called root here and uh, the root directory is created because as root on this host i have uh, launched hive and the temp it is created and you can see the log file over here so the, uh, this hive.log is primarily for the hive queries whenever you launch hive sessions and run hive queries whatever uh, log uh, output um, uh, needs to be stored will be stored in, under hive.log file you can override this location um, by modifying parameters in uh, hivesite.xml we can search for it under configurations Uh, let me clear the scope and also category and now let's search for log uh, one. this is hive meta store server log this is different where log hive and what i'm showing is the logs which are generated uh, for the files i'm uh, sorry for the sessions of hive so i think uh, it is using default ones and those parameters are not reflecting here uh, that's fine uh, we typically do not change if you want to change you need to understand those parameters which will actually control uh, the log location for uh, uh, for our hive queries yeah those parameters are not reflecting here anyway so uh, and there are parameters to modify if you want to change the hive log location you can actually google for it and you can uh, figure it out yeah high query log location so this is the uh, parameter name hive log directory let me see hive dot log dot dir which is not shown here it is using the default value if you have to override you can override it uh, by adding this new parameter hive log dir to store it in in a different location okay hive uh, so and then to to so hive dot log is primarily uh, 
hio.log is primarily to actually um, show the details about the uh, logs generated when we actually run the queries launching hive uh, but if you want to actually uh, make sure uh, hive server 2 is up and running hive metastore uh, is up and running then the logs will go to the they, they are called as service level logs those logs will be again under slash var slash log there is a directory called hive here ok and ls hyphen ltr we have to log on to the 244 because that's where the uh, hive server and hive metastore are running so i am logging in a 2244 now to get the service level logs slash where slash log hive and ls hyphen ltr you can see the log files log file for hive server 2 and hive metastore here so you can actually have a look into these logs if uh, hive metastore or hive server 2 are not coming up for any reason and then uh, uh, logs are also done what is the next thing we need to look yeah that's it about the validation we have validated the daemon process we have validated um, uh, the parameter files we have validated uh, we have looked into the log files both the service level logs as well as the session and query level logs uh, session and query level logs are stored on the slash tmp slash hive sorry slash tmp slash the user id which uh, which have launched hive on that host slash hive dot log is the one which actually have the log files for the queries and sessions and uh, <coughs> if you want to add user defined functions you have to add jar files and you have to create temporary function you might have to update dot hivrc file uh, it is typically done for supporting development teams so in case if a development team gives you user defined functions you have to add it uh, using add jar command and then you have to create a temporary function uh, to take care of this user defined function you can google it to get the instructions over here it is not very important for the administration uh, administration purpose at this time and uh, that being said uh, that's it for this video we have validated all the components and parameters and log files with respect to hive as part of the next video i will give a brief demo about uh, uh, different aspects of hive and also we will validate uh, uh, by running some queries um, uh, that we can actually use hive and uh, hadoop to process the data by running simple queries that being said I hope you are enjoying the content on the channel. If you like this video, please click on the like button. If you want to provide the feedback, please use the comment section of the video. If you want to discuss further about Big Data or Hadoop, please join my LinkedIn group called ITVarsity-Big Data. If you want to discuss further about certifications, please join my LinkedIn group called ITVarsity-Certifications. And if you are not subscribed to my channel yet, please do so. And uh, if you live in the in countries such as UK, US, etc., where fan funding or support this channel feature is enabled you can support this channel by clicking on the support button uh, so that i can come up with more and more content like this over time thank you bye